because we've made our fuel with animal fat feedstock, it has a very high gel point as compared to number two diesel. So we've had to make a number of modifications on this machine so that it can alternate between regular petroleum diesel and the biodiesel we've manufactured here at the farm. So today, we're gonna try out that technology for the first time, and you're gonna come along for the ride. For right now, I wanna walk you through some of the technology and um, engineering we've put into this tractor so that it can run on either B100 or regular petroleum diesel. The temperature of our fuel right now is 36.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only will this fuel gel, but it will clog the filter and injection system of this tractor if it is pumped into the injection system at this temperature. We need to bring the fuel above its gel point, above its cold filter plug point, and have a heated filter before it's pumped into the injection system. The first modification we've made is bulkhead fittings inside the auxiliary tank. Inside of this auxiliary tank is a copper coil. And these lines are the, are the feed and return for the antifreeze. So the antifreeze coming from the engine block will be about 180 degrees. It will run through this copper coil and it will heat up the fuel inside to approximately the same temperature. We have these two fuel hoses. One of them is to vent any condensation or heat so that water does not get into the fuel. The other one is the return line from the injection system. So this will run unpressurized fuel back to the biodiesel tank without contaminating it with petroleum-based diesel. This is a New Holland TT75A. Because it's a cabless tractor, it did not have a heater core that we could activate for these coolant lines. So we've drilled into the block and these lines go all the way back to the heating element that I just showed you inside of the auxiliary tank. Mounted here on the tractor with these small welds and mounting are two solenoid valves, which we've run to the dash of the tractor with an electronic switch. So prior to operating our solenoid valves that switch between petroleum and biodiesel, we're gonna activate the 12 volt heaters on the fuel filter and on the fuel lines. By activating the switch, we have 12 volt power off of the starter that controls both of those modules. After the fuel has been preheated, we can switch between petroleum-based diesel with a relatively low gel point and our biodiesel with a relatively high gel point. This is the electronic component, and these have three different hoses coming into each one of them, one for the pressure side and one for the return side. I've also insulated those lines right here. And this is so that the first flush of biodiesel can be preheated and will not gel on the way to the injection system. I have my antifreeze lines in here so that they are capturing that heat from the engine block to preheat the fuel lines before the solenoid is activated. Because the solenoid valves operate independently, the fuel injection system that we're using for biodiesel needs its own filter and it needs its own injection pump. So the same switch that activates the solenoid also activates this fuel pump, which is independent of the tractor's stock fuel pump. It also needs its own filter. So this is the fuel filter that's dedicated to biodiesel. You'll notice a 12 volt heater, a silicone heater on the filter itself. That silicone heater is activated by the same 12 volt switch that controls the heat tape and the fuel pump. So we're going to take this tractor for a lap, activate some of the heating components that we've spoken about, and see if we can bring the temperature of this fuel up in anticipation of our test drive. I've hit the switch that will heat up the fuel filter and will activate the heat tape 
that runs with the biodiesel fuel line. I took the tractor out for about a 10 minute lap running on 100% petroleum based diesel. When I returned, the temperature of the biodiesel fuel had increased roughly 35 degrees to 63 degrees, which is above its cold filter plug point. If I continued to let the heating elements work, the fuel would reach a temperature of 180 degrees. We took the tractor up into one of our fields and attached a small tire harrow so that the tractor could do work on biodiesel. As I said, the fuel and fuel lines are preheated. I'm just checking the tank for warmth and the heater. After confirming that the heating elements are working, it's time to hit the electronic switch which will activate the solenoid. Here we go. I expected something to be different somehow, but upon hearing nothing, I wanted to make sure that the solenoid valve had in fact activated the biodiesel fuel source, and it had. A huge relief. Nothing is leaking. The systems installed seem to be working. Smells like barbecue. After confirming that the system was engaged and there were no issues with running biodiesel, I decided to put the tractor to work. Throttle up, emissions down. This tractor's running on 100% beef and pork waste fat.